Okay, we should be live. And today uh, we are going to be painting a snow globe scene, a snow globe scene filled with winter charm. Um, you're going to want to grab your uh, watercolors and your brushes and come along and paint this one with me. I will go over everything that I'm using. It's all linked in the description below. Um, audio is live, video is live, and the heart is gone. Yes. Okay. I removed the uh, live in, uh, live reactions because they, they tend to block part of the chat and until YouTube like moves that, it's just frustrating to have it blocking. And then it makes it hard for me to see whoever's last comment came in and Anyhow, okay, so ah, Tara is having issues with her network. Okay, audio is a little low. Is it low or am I low? Was I just talking low? Let me know if that, let me know if that fixed it because it could have been me. And there's Rob. Yes, thank you, Rob, for the reminder. We have all new emotes today. Santa has taken over the chat. So if, uh, you are a channel member. I invite you come along, uh, have some fun with us for super fans and above. So at the very lowest level, you get access to all of the emotes. I try to change them weekly to keep things fun for you guys in the chat. And, um, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully the audio is better now. I'm hoping. Um, you guys let me know. I think I was talking quite, uh, softly. I haven't changed anything, so it should be all right. I can turn it up just slightly, but <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, if it was just Joseph, I don't want to like blow everybody else's ears out. If I've, I've turned it up a little bit. So hopefully that helps. Okay. I'm excited about this one. I painted this, uh, <clears throat> oh, Rob said can't stay for the whole stream, but needed to be here. Oh, well, I'm glad you're here. Um, it is always a pleasure. Today I am using, let me, let me just drop this down so you can see on the desk as well. So today I'm using some of the, uh, Ganzai Tambi watercolor paints. I'm loving these. I'm just really, really enjoying them, but I'm going to keep it simple, right? We're only going to use two colors. I believe these are the same two colors that I used the last time we painted with these. And I have indigo and the blue gray deep blue gray deep. If you don't have these paints, don't worry. It's fine. A neutral tint or a mixture of say phthalo blue and a black that would work and it would be just fine. I'm going to be using Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white, but uh, as long as I didn't ruin it, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to be using the bleed proof white, or you can use white gouache if that's what you have. Uh, and I have my mimic brushes today and I'm probably going to use, I am going to use my size 14 round and I have a size six in case I need something with a little bit more detail. Okay. Oh, there you go. Joseph has linked those in the description. I'm really, yeah, I'm really loving these, uh, the Gensai Tambi watercolors. These are, they can be opaque or they can be more transparent. It just depends on how, how, you know, much water you put with them. And <clears throat> the, re the, the snow effect that I showed you with the spray bottle. I'm going to be doing that again today. And that just works with these paints so wonderfully. And the next thing that we are going to be using, which Joseph also just, he is on top of it today that he dropped in the, um, just, uh, the live chat is the Meaden 100% cotton watercolor paper. And the folks over at Meaden have kindly given, uh, my viewers, you guys, a discount. So if you use the code Clark, that was with a capital C Clark 10, you can get a discount on this. 
I definitely recommend purchasing from Mead and you're going to get the newest version. This is the older version that has the, uh, the green blue type glue on the border. The new ones don't. Um, it's clear. And yeah, I might have one right here. <clears throat> You'll know if it's the old version or the new version by what this looks like. This covers the old version. This kind of cover is the new version. Now I have the rough and the hot press here. I don't have the, um, I don't have the cold press in on the new one yet. I, you know, was put on a no buy because it is almost Christmas. So I don't need to spoil anything that Santa and his elves are working on. Um, but I can tell you that if Santa doesn't visit Meaden on his way by, I will absolutely be ordering. There is a set that I'm going to absolutely be recommending. Anyways, I'll be ordering it. That's future me. Future you will watch. <laughs> we will share. It will be wonderful. That'll be when we come back after the break in the new year. And I'll, we'll discuss more about that later as well. So, if you see this and the cold press, I believe is the red. It's like the orange, uh, the blue, and I think cold press is red, um, which, you know, didn't change from here. So we're going to be using that. And if you order from Maiden directly, I have ordered from them multiple times now. My stuff always comes quickly. And I never have any issues like with Amazon when I order a thing of paper and they chuck it in a mylar bag and throw that through the mail and then it comes in and all the corners are bashed up and bent and I digress I won't go there <laughs> um but meaning it always comes lovely uh the way it's packaged in a box protected and I've never had any issues ever so yeah <clears throat> I definitely do recommend <clears throat> excuse me I definitely do recommend shopping straight from their website and they'll give you a discount. Code Clark10, the number 10. In addition, I am, I, I said, my bleed proof white. So uh, you can use gouache. You can use, doesn't have to be cotton paper. You can do this on uh, cellulose paper. Remember I showed you when I taught this technique for doing a snowy background, it worked on cellulose and cotton. So feel free to use what you have. But if you are looking, if you've just used cellulose paper and you've not painted on cotton paper yet, this is a wonderful, this is a wonderful paper to start with. I like the B cotton paper, but I think this is my new absolute favorite choice for, um, because of its price point and its quality, this would definitely be my best recommendation. This or the Baohong Academy which are both sold by Meaden. If you click the link to Meaden, you'll see both. I've shared it before, but this is what Academy looks like, just in case. This is cold press. Hot press and rough will have the um, background color where this is green. It'll be a different color. Green is cold press. And um, yeah, also 100% cotton. It's very close, if not exactly the same paper as the one with the Meaden branding. So you pay a dollar or so more for the Baohong branding. I'll leave that up to you. Only you can make that decision for yourself, which would be right. So this is step one. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to go through this step by step. So if you want to paint along, you can absolutely do this with me in real time. Step one is to begin by sketching the, um, I'm seeing gifted, uh, memberships coming through. Hi, Sheila Hubbard. Sheila Hubbard was gifted a membership by Rob Younts. Roxanne was gifted a membership by Rob Younts. Snow S was gifted a membership by Rob Younts. Um, also, we have Nanette uh, 
is it Liker? Excuse me if I'm not saying your last name correctly. Was also gifted a membership. So I don't know if the, I didn't see Rob drop gifts in the chat. So I don't know if those ones and TJ was gifted a membership. So I don't know if those were left over from last week's gift. But yay, I'm so glad that you all were able to claim one of those. <coughs> Excuse me. I cannot breathe today. All right. And I think it's just my asthma acting up. The weather's changing. Like the weather just went through a quick change. Like we had all this warm weather. We got these nasty storms that caused flooding everywhere. And the river like crossed the road and was trying to come up my road. I'm on much higher ground. So I'm like, it would have to be like a thousand year flood for that river to get up to where I am on my street. I'm not worried about that. But Rob says, no, I did the thing again, but it didn't show up in my chat. I didn't see it. That is weird. Did anybody else see it? Because it didn't show up in my, in my chat, but you did. Well, thank you, Rob. Okay. I, I'm like scattered today. I'm sorry. My apologies. Um, but we are just going to dive into this project and we're going to go through it step by step together. This is not one that's difficult. If you saw the, yeah, just, I don't know why it did that. It didn't, it just didn't show up. Uh, I'm going to go down to just the desk. Cause then I can show you a picture real quick of the, um, I'm like chopping my, Sorry, guys. I'm like chopping my head off there. Um, go down to the full screen on the desk so I can show you this one. So this is one that I painted. You'll notice that the base of the snow globe is a little different than the one that we are, <clears throat> excuse me, that we are painting today. I had so much fun with this. I was like, I kept telling Lou, I'm like, I haven't painted a snow globe yet this year. I, I, I want to paint a snow globe. And... I've painted one similar to this before, but this one, I just went monochromatic. Um, the colors that I mentioned to you today are the two colors that I, oh, I said indigo. So yeah, if you have indigo, this is my indigo, the Kuretake, uh, Ganzai Tambi paints and the blue gray deep. I'm loving these so much. Uh, I just have a little mixing well where I mixed up the lighter color and the darker color. You'll see me mix them, so don't worry about that. And the bleed proof white we're going to end up using, and we'll need the spritzer bottle to do the same snow effect that I taught last time. So if you missed that, don't worry, we're gonna do this all step by step together. Uh, the mimic brushes are listed in the description. Right, because the, um, Ooh, that one just like shed a couple of hairs. It was the first time they don't normally shed that. This is just the first time I've used this particular brush. So it happens when it's a brand new one. The Nick Pro brushes that I was using, all the ferrules were coming loose on those. And I just can't recommend them if that's what's going to happen. I haven't reached out to Nick Pro yet. So I will update you on that as I find out you know, more from them. Hi, Anna Petty. All right. Oh, and I have a toothbrush here because we are going to do some splattering. And I'm probably going to ruin my Christmas manicure because I'm going to splatter with that. See, if you can see those. Yep. All ready for Christmas. Um, but it's just Dr. Peach Martin's bleed proof. It'll wash right off. It'll be fine. Okay. Are you guys ready for me to stop blabbering on and dive right into this? So step one is put your design on your watercolor paper. If you want to do this, this line art is available for free. You can download this over at patreon.com slash Clark Fine Art. You do not have to be a patron to get this. I made this available for everyone. Oh, thank you, Anna. So this is available to everyone. 
So if you want to watch it first and then go grab it and watch again and paint along with me, I encourage you to do so. I think this is going to be a fun one. Uh, I'm going to take my kneaded eraser first and I'm just going to, now that you guys have seen it, I'm just going to lift out a little bit of that graphite. I sketched this directly on to my paper. And like I said, I changed the base a little bit from what you saw in that little reference photo. The reference photo is a card I painted this year for Christmas. Here it is. It just said, now it says Rob gifted 10 memberships. Oh, this time. So you did it. To, you did it twice. Ah, <sighs> okay. Well, thank you, Rob. That is so generous of you. And I shared how to, if you are wondering, how do I claim a gifted membership? I'd sent this before and now of course I'm not remembering. Uh, you click on, you can click right on Rob's where it says Rob gifted the memberships or at the very top where you see Rob's icon, um, the gift and the number 10, which should be up at the top of your live chat. If you're watching this during the stream and you would just say, allow gifts from this channel or on this channel. One thing about gifted memberships, turning that on, it's never going to ask you to put in any like card information or to sign up or that you have to continue your membership or that your membership will continue automatically if you don't uh, cancel. It's not like that. Uh, YouTube has done it a wonderful job with this. A gift is a gift. It lasts for 30 days and then it's gone. It just goes away. Unless you decide that you want to continue your membership and then you will need to take action. But you don't need to take action unless you don't want it to continue. So, um, yeah, you can click on that or I believe it is. Oh my gosh. It's like, Wait a second. Let me just double check because I think I sent it to Joseph. I think I sent the link to Joseph. And I'm just going to check that for you because this was something and please bear with me because this is something that has been asked um, multiple times when we are streaming. And I think I have... pretty sure I sent it. Just, I, I just not remembering the last part. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Okay. So it would be, that's all right. Um, I'm going to drop it in the chat. If you're unsure, or if you can't figure out how to accept a gift, a gifted membership, and that's something you want to do, you can go to YouTube, youtube.com slash find art slash allow underscore gifts. So right there. Um, I just popped that up in the chat. So Joseph, if you want to copy that down, um, and Tara, if Tara's here and her internet's not being crazy, um, I'm going to pop that up on the screen if, because this works for any channel where it says Clark Fine Art, it would just be what the channel's name is. Um, but you just go, you can click on that if you're here in the live stream and that would take you right to where you would say, allow gifts on this channel. And then YouTube could select you for a gifted membership when people drop them in the chat. So yeah. And again, no obligation to stay, no obligation whatsoever and no action is required if you do not want it to continue. It will automatically just go away. A gift is a gift and that is it. All right. And huge thank you to Rob. Let's go ahead and get going with this. I just wanted to make sure because we have had that question asked 
for weeks now and I finally got the information and wanted to, and I know it works because I tested it. So, all right, I've lightened up my sketch here. I'm not worried about the bottom because that's going to be dark. So those lines will disappear. I just wanted to lessen these lines mostly. And if you're trying, if you know, maybe you want to sketch this out, you can do this in any shape you want. Uh, as far as the base goes, you can customize that shape. Um, feel free to customize the shape and size to your liking. This is just going to serve as a guide for you for the painting process. And like I said, you can get this line out for free over on my Patreon website. So what I did was I started with a perfect circle and a perfect circle came down to about, you can still see a little bit of remnant of that line down to about here. And I just brought it up because I wanted the glass to look like it's setting inside the base of this. So to begin, we're going to wet our snow globe. We want to wet just the snow globe, not the base. So I'm using my size 14 round mimic brush. And I'm just going to get this paper nice and wet. And I never think to like mix up my color ahead of time. But these Kansai Tambi paints re-wet so beautifully. Ugh, they're, they're so easy to work with. And this technique for the snowy background that I'm going to show you is um, wonderful. Oh, great, great question. And I don't have it linked in the description. Be, don't know why, just because I wasn't anticipating um, I wasn't anticipating that question, but I used, I've, I've linked it before, but I use this right here. And if you click on my link to Amazon, I have a general link in the description and you just type in helix, H E L I X circle. Uh, this will come up It allows you to do all different kinds size circles. And it allows you to choose, like you see here, it says one, that would be like a one inch radius, two inch diameter circle. You would just put your pencil in that hole or any of these other holes to adjust the size. And this spins so that you can hold it flat like here and just draw your circle out. Mine was actually the size of this. So that is the answer to Anna's question. Perfect, she says, I have that one. All right. So our globe is wet and I'm going to use the indigo. If you don't have indigo, it's going to be a little bit more phthalo blue, a little less black, right? So we have something that looks kind of like that. See, that looks kind of like phthalo blue with a little black in it. You see that? And I don't need a lot because I'm going to water this down. I want this to be light. So I'm really watering this down. To lighten our watercolors, we don't add white. We just add water. All right. And when I first put it on my paper, I'm going to go over the entire thing. Okay. That's perfect. So I'm just going to fill this in. And when I do this, I try to make sure that I follow like around. This is a little bit larger scale than the, um, you notice I'm not lifting my brush here. That is because that's the bottom and where I, where I lift, if there was paint in my brush, it's going to deposit more and I'd rather that happened at the top. You see, as I'm painting like around the globe, because should I leave a lighter mark like that, it's just going to help add to that glass effect. And down here, if this is lighter, that's fine. We're not going to worry about that. Because we're going to have snow down there. So we're going to want that lighter. We can come back in with some Dr. P.H. Martin's after and brighten up any areas that we want to be brighter. So we don't, you don't have to worry about leaving areas of the paper white. All right. 
So now that I have this on here, remember last week, last week or the week before, there's something on my paper. Oh, there's like a piece of lint or something. If I don't hurry up and get that off. There we go. Nope, still there. All right, I think I got it that time. Okay, wonderful. So there we go. Rob says I have to draw. Okay, Rob, have a very Merry Christmas. I am sure I will be talking to you on Discord, but thank you so much. Thanks for the wonderful Christmas gifts for everybody in the chat. We appreciate you. Okay, so now the next step, once I have this in, I need to do my background snow. So I'm going to take my spritzer. I'm going to hold it up here above my paper and I'm going to bring it back. Let me switch view so that you can see me and the desk. So I have this back. I'm about eight to 10 inches above the height of my paper. And I'm about six inches behind where my circle is. And now if you watch the circle, uh, uh, I gotta hurry when I do this because time is of the essence. The water droplets are going to immediately start to cause what's going to look like snowflakes. And I may have waited a little too long, but I'm just going to kind of let that go. I want to get that big one out because I got a little, a little too big of a drop there. Yeah, that's not. So uh, now I'm going to show you, this is perfect because I'm going to show you what happens if like I talked too long and it got too dry. So I'm going to just come back in here and wet my snow globe. And see, you don't have to worry. Let me work through. There we go. My color back in there. And I was trying to hurry, so I definitely, there's a hair. All right, I've never had a mimic brush shed on me. And it does not want to come up. I don't want to really, I don't want to scrape with my palette knife because I don't want to Wow, does not want to come off of there. We're being challenged today. It just does not want to come up. I'm like trying not to scratch my paper because that will make my unreal. I'm just going to move it over to the area where I know I'm going to put my tree and it can just hang out there and my tree is going to paint over that area anyway and I'll take it off when it's dry. Okay. So I'm going to try this one more time. I got to let this set for a minute. And the reason I have to let this set is because you see how wet my paper is. My paper is still very wet. It's too wet to do this technique. I needed Now I need it to dry a little bit first. But then we're just going to come in and we're going to give a spritz and that water is going to push some of that away and it's going to give us that background snow effect. Yeah, imitation kitty glitter. I'm just kind of watching for some of the spots. You see the little spots starting to develop. 
that look like they're all over. I need some more up here. I don't want to go too fast with this. If I go too fast, I could just make it really wet and it's going to push blooms and it's not going to be pretty. So this is what, this is the step you have to take your time. And if you can see, see, it's still looking quite wet. That is just so bugging me. It does not want to pick up. Like it doesn't want to pick up for anything. Wow. I'm sure it's because the paper's so wet. It's still quite wet. And that's one thing with watercolor we have to be patient on. So literally I'm asking you to watch paint dry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and here I went outside my circle just a little bit. I'm not worried about that. And even here, let me just show you. I'm going to turn this around so I'm not reaching across my painting. Right here, there's a little bit that's outside of my circle. I want to remove that. I am just going to wet my brush. Come here and wet that area. Press with the tissue and lift off. Do it again. Lift off. There we go. And you see I have another spot right here. And just wet this area. And then press and lift. And that'll take it away. Let me see if I can show you that sheen. See how it's now it's becoming more satin, less shine, more satin. I'm going to give it the spritz one more try. There we go. And that's what you're waiting for. That you see how now you can see all these dots I just did. You're waiting for that satin look to your paper. And then when you do that little spritz, it's going to give you what it will look like snowflakes falling in the background. And yes, I'm pushing my luck because that was a big one. I, went, I tried to press it like really slowly. The trees are going to cover that. I'm not worried about it. Okay. We're going to leave that. It is what it is. If I made this just slightly darker, we probably would have seen a better effect, but it's fine. So that's step one. Now we have to let this dry. So, and we want this to dry on its own to a certain extent. Once our dots have developed the way that we want for our snowflakes when we spritz our water, at that point, and only at that point, we could take a heat tool, hair dryer on a low setting, and we could dry our paper. I don't need to have this completely dry. I just need to have it dry enough to work up the next step. If you're still waiting for these effects, you know, the watercolor to spread, you don't want to use your dryer because your dryer is going to freeze your paint. So because I'm going to take the water out of this, it can no longer push that color away. I'm going to freeze it. I'm going to lock it right where it's at. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And if this is too loud, please drop me a comment and let me know because for whatever reason, I'm hoping in the new year, we're going to resolve this issue and you won't be able to hear the dryer. And if I'm lucky, I can get rid of this hair. Okay, that is more than enough. It is not, it is not completely, it's not 100% dry, but it is dry enough that I can go on to my next step because my next step is also, see how it left the line there, which I knew it was going to do. That's why I moved it to that position. Yay, now it's finally gone. Um, that's why I moved it to that position so that 
Excuse me. I'm going to paint a tree over it. It's going to, our foreground tree will go there and it'll disappear. So let me bring you back to the full desk view. And there in your upper right corner is, that's the scene we're going to put in this globe. Our base is different, but our globe's going to be the same. So the next step is our mountains. So for our mountains, uh, I'm going to use my size six round. Uh, I could, I could use my um, 14. It would be fine. Actually, you know what? Maybe I will. I'm just, it was very wet. I'm just getting the extra water out of that. And so now my paper, I'm not going to add any more water to the mixture I had already done of my indigo. My paper is dry or drier, mostly dry. So there's not a lot of water here to further dilute this. We painted wet in wet, so there was a lot of water on our globe. And that water that was on our globe further deleted, the, or deleted, diluted this color. This is not going to dilute now. So when I pick up this color, it's going to be darker. It's going to look darker. And we're just going to do some mountains. And so about a third of the way down our globe is where we want those peaks to be. So I'm going to come in just above halfway and just, right, I'm just going to get some lines. You can paint your mountains any shape you would like. Now that I have that, I'm just going to rinse my brush. I want these to just kind of blend, right? And I'm going to come back at the base of where I just put in that color. And then I'm going to bring that down. Now my brush was damp. It was not wet. I rinsed the color out of it, but it was damp, not wet. Now this is, now that this is wet, drop in just a little bit more. Right, this back side, my shadow side will be to my left. So I'm just tapping the edge of my color and I'm going to put in some shadow on this left side because this is now damp. So it's going to disperse and be nice and soft. Okay, there's the start of our mountains. And these are going to be back behind trees. So no worries. Um, you can't really mess this up. Just whatever shape you want your mountains to be. If I want to make that a little bit more peaked right there, there we go. And don't worry if your dark, like my dark came too far this way. That doesn't matter because we are going, I'm going to rinse my brush again. After I rinse my brush, this brush is very thirsty. It will hold a lot of water. So I'm just tapping that out. I should grab my sponge because that would work so much better. And I'm just putting at the base here. It's just going to soften that edge. Ooh, and see, I just went outside my circle. All that, that takes is a clean brush. And we just erase it. There we go. Okay, so there's my mountains in the background. Next, we're going to work on some of our background trees. So I'm going to switch to my size six round. And now I'm going to go with my blue gray deep. Okay, that is this color. I'm just going to re-wet that. Put a couple drops of water in here. Re-wet that in this little palette. You'll notice it's, it's quite, this is quite wet. It's like tea, right? That's like tea consistency. It's very thin because these trees are in the distance. This color is darker than that one uh, on its own. And if you don't have the blue gray deep, if you don't have the Gansai Tambi paints, again, you can just take a little bit of phthalo blue with a little neutral tint or uh, black if you don't have neutral tint and mix those together to get a nice deep blue. And then we just want to dilute that. 
So if you can see that on that, as I move my brush, you can kind of see the color that that blue, that blue is. All right, and I need to have some trees. These are in the background. These are like behind where our main tree is gonna go. They're over here beside where our cabin is gonna go. So don't be, don't get too worried about how these trees look. I'm just grabbing a little water and I'm actually diluting this a little bit more. Okay. We are going to start about here. <laughs> Joseph said I have had to move Chris's present. Now see, this is wet from when we just painted the mountains. So this is gonna wanna move and that's fine. If it's moving too much, right? Just dab that out. We just hit it with the dryer for a second because this has already got a nice smooth blend at the bottom. I don't need to dry it completely. I just need enough so it's not moving so fast. And really, if this is new territory to you, if you are unfamiliar with this, the best thing you can do is just dive in and give it a try. Okay, I'm just going to the impression that there are some trees back here. If you notice in my um, over here, you can't hardly see the trees that are like, they're like right in this area right here. You can't hardly see them. Watercolor will dry lighter. Okay, I'm just going to like, there's some trees back here. That's it. That's all I got to worry about. My main tree is going to come right over top of this. So I might do or like there's some shadow on the ground caused by these trees. I don't know. Maybe the sun is really low. It's winter time. The sun doesn't get up so high in the sky. Hi, Simone Mac. <clears throat> All right. Now we're going to put some trees in on this side. Now I want my cabin to be right about here. So in the right third. And I'm going to set it, the base of it, right about right about where my brush is. Okay. So it's going to kind of nestle back in this space, but my mountains are still plenty far enough back. And you see here how I still have those, those spots from my snow that I had that was falling. That's just going to look like it's further in the background. And we are going to paint some trees over here. Now these, the way that I did them, was I did a few that were lighter and I'm not worried about these really looking like any kind of fancy tree, right? This is even a little darker than I painted the original ones with because I do a couple that are closer to the foreground um, that look like they're right there even with the log cabin. Uh, I don't know where that little squiggle came from. I just didn't lift my brush enough. There's no trees there. See, we just left that out. There we go. Good enough. It's a little too dark. Let's lift it out. I want this. I'm getting a hard line here, so I'm just wetting my brush, tapping that off. I'm like, all of a sudden, everything was shaking in my studio. It's like, what is going on? The last time I felt like that, it was like we actually had an earthquake, a very minor one. Um, in fact, I thought Lou was doing something that was making the house shake. And I'm like, what are you doing? Come to find out he wasn't doing anything. Maine was having an earthquake. This was like, I don't know, it was summertime. And it was like a year or two. I think it was two years now. Is it, well, I don't believe it was this past summer. Look at those distant trees. 
we're just giving the impression you don't have to paint perfect trees this is in the background right we just got a couple little peaks we know that there's stand a couple stands of trees and that is good enough for us so now these ones i'm going to paint a few that are closer so i want to pull this out i'm pulling out from my darker remember i deleted this a little bit more so pulling from my darker and yeah, I'm going to put in a couple right here. And again, that's going to want to go into my other trees, but I want this one to have a little bit more definition. So I'm just going to hit this with a quick dry. Let my paper cool off for a moment. now let's give that a go again and see now that line's staying and it's not dispersing so you don't need it to be completely dry just a little drier than it was again these are this is still you know in our snow globe a bit so i'm not worried too much about this design because i'm going to come back on top of this with some Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. So I don't have to worry too much about this. I'll define my branches and such with the Dr. P.H. Martin's. I still don't want this as, might maybe a little darker than we've got right now. So I'm just going to grab a little bit more. And this was the, um, yeah, blue, gray, deep. I always want to say the color backwards. Just dropping that in there. All right, because it's only going to spread as far as I have that tree wet now. So, and I need another one. How about this one's a little taller? I'm just dabbing, getting the, following a general, like tall, skinny, triangular shape, making sure I have some points sticking out on the sides. Again, you're going to see me define this tree with the Dr. Peach Martin's Bleed Proof White. And let's anchor this. With, oh, I'm going to, I'm actually going to rinse my brush out tap that off just take what's already here and just kind of give a little bit of shadow cast on the ground there There we go. Thanks, Tara. Tara says it's looking great already. Um, and we're not going to worry about this. I may lift out a little area so that it kind of looks like, you know, maybe we have some highlights in our snow. Maybe it's some light that's coming from our cabin. And that is just with a damp, not wet, a damp brush. Just all... I, what I did was I didn't clean my brush and then I went back in. So the color I picked up, I just put down. There we go. Don't let watercolor intimidate you because this is definitely, I think sometimes it, it, it intimidated me. I'm, I'm definitely speaking from personal experience. When I first try, uh, 
was suggested that I try watercolor, I was like, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> that is not for me. I'll stick with my acrylic paints. Thanks. And, um, but I loved it. Absolutely loved it. All right, let's work on our cabin. So now while that is drying, our cabin, this is easy. We don't need to have this pre-drawn. We don't need to sketch it. It's just going to be, our cabin is here. Okay. We are going to sketch in with our brush. Doesn't have to be perfect. We got kind of a rectangle with a triangle that sits on top. It's a cabin. I'm going to want there to be a door right about there. So we can get into our little cabin. I think all of our chances for a nice snowy white wind, uh, Christmas all got washed away. I'm just doing lines like this because I want it to feel like a little cabin. If I leave a little white space, that's fine. Maybe there's snow stuck to some of the logs. Maybe you see little bump outs. Right. You know how log cabins sometimes the ends when they like I think link like Lincoln logs. Am I aging myself? Right, little little dots. So I just do little dots. If you guys can't see that, let me bring it a little closer for you. Boom. We're gonna build on this, so don't overthink this part. It's a rectangle with a triangle on top. That's it. All right, I'm dipping my brush in the um, water. But I didn't switch it to like rinse it out. I want this to be actually, I'm gonna take a little bit of this lighter color. I want this light, but I want it a little darker in here because we're gonna define our path right now. That's what we're gonna do. So our path, where we painted our door, and I had you do the door because now you see the door's gone. Yes, but we know where that door was and we can put it back. But we're gonna go from that. Right? coming kind of at a diagonal out here. And I'm picturing it coming down. It gets wider as it gets closer to us. That shows, that helps us show that there's really some distance. We've got to really get into that snow globe to get to our cabin. There we go. That easy. There's the path. We're going to build up our snow along the pathway because, you know, somebody had to go out there and shovel that. It wasn't me. That's for sure. That's why everybody says I like the snow because I'm spoiled and I never have to shovel it. I mean, I have shoveled it. I've shoveled lots of snow in my day, but these days I'm extra spoiled and don't have to. All right. Don't worry about the roof. Uh, because we're going to do that with our Dr. P.H. Martins. That's going to be really easy. Maybe a little bit going. I'm going to come with a kind of like a side triangle, like a triangle on it on the side, right? I'm going backwards because our, our building, as it goes deeper, right, we're going to follow some... Um, Oh my gosh. Vanishing point. Wow, that just would not come. So we want it to go, like if it's going deep in, we want it to come together. So you see that forms kind of like a little triangle with the front of our building. And our roof line is going to do the same. So we're just going to put in a little side there. That may kind of disappear as we start to do our snow, and that's okay. You see how it did in the other one? That's fine. Oh, Teresa says that's looking great. Have to go. Oh, have a Merry Christmas, Teresa. Thanks for coming by and hanging out with us for a bit. All right. So while our cabin is, while well, that part's starting to dry, let's put in, this is plenty dry now. Now let's put in our big uh, foreground tree. Our foreground tree, that one's going to be dark. 
So I'm getting more of my blue gray deep. I want to want it to be nice and dark. There we go. Okay, just making sure I don't have too much water by pressing right at the base of my brush where it meets my ferrule. It will pull out some of that water, but I'll still have plenty of um, pigment in my in my brush. I'm gonna start uh, about here. Yeah, about about maybe about here. And we're going to put our tree in right there. So this little line from the brush hair is just going to disappear. So I'm going to start with a straight line down. So I know about where I want my tree to stand. It stands right about there. And now I'm just going to start dabbing in my tree. Uh, this is going to be snow flocked. So I definitely want my... Um, branches to be weighed down. I want them to go this way. Uh, if I was drawing this tree and it was summertime, then my branches would be kind of level and even slightly higher as it goes up towards the top. But on a tree that's in winter with all the wet, heavy snow on it, those branches are definitely weighed down. So that's the way we want to draw them or paint them. So we're going to paint them down. And apparently I love to paint trees. I just like painting landscape. The leaves, like doing the deciduous trees, you know, the trees that lose their leaves, like our, the maples and the oaks and the birch leaves. Those are still, those are still my nemesis as far as trees go. I enjoy painting evergreens. But I'll get there. It'll finally, one day it's going to click. And I'll be like, that's it. And it's going to be as soon as I stop overthinking it. There's, there's no secret there, guys. We do that. We do it to ourselves. All right. So there's my tree, I'm gonna need a little bit more. That's gonna be my tree in the foreground. Okay, so we're still, we're still a bit away from going from this to that, but don't worry, we're gonna get there. Now, while this here is drying, I am going to work on painting my base because then we're gonna come back and it's gonna be a lot of work with um, our Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And we're going to put like our our mountain peaks. We're going to do stuff like that. We can put in, actually, before we go, before we do that, I'm rinse my brush out. I'm going to come back here. Remember the one we did the mountains in in the first place? I'm going to come back. And just put a few more... shadow areas kind of doing a little negative painting around my trees that are back there all right and just kind of dragging that along I'm just letting my brush kind of skip across the paper. Because those lighter areas will end up looking like snow on the mountain, but on the backside that's shadowed. We go okay now we've got some mountains coming along 
Now let's paint our base to our snow globe. Where it comes here, I picture this as being a rounded area of wood. We may have some darker shadow up in here, but our snow globe is glass. It's going to reflect some. So out here, we're going to have a brighter, uh, a, a lighter spot. And then where this gets concave, right, we're going to have it get darker. It's going to be darker up here. And then it's going to start to get light again. All right. And then we just have our face, our color for our facing. So that's where we're, that's how we're going to do that. Um, I am going to use... my 14 round again and I'm going to use my blue gray deep because it is almost like neutral tint and if you have the neutral tint you could just use neutral tint for this or if you want it just to look like wood you could change up the color and make it look like wood it's your snow globe whatever you want your base to look like I'm just kind of going with that monochromatic keeping the painting feeling very cool and so I'm going to paint it with my blue gray deep and we're going to go for that kind of um dark dark blue almost black but it's not black we're not going to paint it with black and i will say that i found out that jackson's i'm hoping that maybe we can get lucky and blick will sell them here in the u.s jackson's carries the Gansai Tambi paints open stock. So I could see me using up my blue gray deep like because this is the closest thing to neutral tint in the set of 48. I could see me using this color up much faster than some others. I can now order that open stock, which is another reason as soon as I found out that they could be available open stock, that really made these become a paint that I wanted to explore more. Um, just because I didn't want to, I'm taking this full strength right through here. All right, and I'm gonna go into my water. Just kind of rinse that out and just come back. This is gonna be a very wet brush. I really didn't want to get into paints and recommending paints to you guys that you can't get open stock because then once you use them, like you have to buy a whole new set of paints. No, you should only have to buy the ones that you use up, in my opinion, and not have to buy all of them. You see, I'm leaving a little space there. I'm going to come back with my smaller brush. And catch the darker, the darker spot with that. Paper's wanting to dry quickly. This should have been able to just blend in. I'm just re-wetting everything. So I don't get weird lines. Right. 
Amazing. I'm going to grab my size. There we go. That's an eight. I'm just grabbing a size eight. Thought I was going to get through a painting without needing my glasses. Not the case. It's because I'm trying to follow along my lines. When I did my card, I did not worry so much about it. I just went with it. There we go. Here's my guideline. darken some of this up and this topper part topper right this top part topper part you know the topper part And I'm pushing my color. So when I do, you see me doing this, as I work towards the globe, I'm pushing the color. I'm pushing it in. Now I'm going to make that contact with the line of my globe. And I'm going to grab a little bit more of that color. And Joseph says, well done. I would have strayed outside the lines for sure. I Well, I did a little bit, but I'll clean them up. I'm just grabbing some of the darker color, just dropping it right along this edge. You see that one was really moving there. That's okay. So we're going to have some shadow in close, but then we're going to have highlight out here. And let me just fix this line a little bit. There we go. Same on this side. I'm just going to fix this line a little. All right. 
I'm going to put in a line. Now rinse my brush, tap my brush dry, just come through, pressing on this front edge, sort of lift out a little bit of a highlight right there. There we go. And now this here I think could be a little bit darker. So why don't we just bring a little bit more in. I don't, I don't have enough pink on my brush. Again, I, you saw me tap my brush because I want a damp brush. I don't want a wet brush. I wanted it to be a little bit of water, but not too much. I think it went a little too high here in the middle. But that's okay. Now you're going to see me just come through again, just tapping that on a tissue. And I'm just going to follow this along the edge that I want to be that rounded, you know, where the rounded wood is. I don't need to overwork, overthink. I've probably already done that enough. <laughs> but there is our globe base. I can make this darker. If I wanted this in the front to be darker, I could absolutely come through and do that. And once this dries and I see how it looks, I may darken that up. But for now, I'm going to leave it alone and just wait and see what happens. So while that's drying, let's start to work on uh, our Dr. Ph. Martin's Blue Proof White portion of the top here. We're gonna need we're gonna need our blues again. So I'm just gonna set this aside because that has to do with the way that we get the glass. If you look, this is how my painting over here looked <clears throat> before. <clears throat> Excuse me. The magic happens in the final step. All right. Now let me grab my. Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I told you I'd share the story. Um, so every time I opened mine, uh, it was so crusted up like around the outside and I would just get like flakes of white everywhere. If you saw the mess, I had to clean off my desk um, after all the things that I've been painting for the holidays. Uh, yeah, it was a mess. My Bleed Proof White got a little bit of liquid in it. So I don't know... I don't know if it's too thin. I don't know if it got too thin. And the way I fix it is I just leave it on my desk with the lid off for a little while while I'm in the studio. I wouldn't leave it like that, um, you know, if I wasn't going to be in here because I would forget knowing myself and I, I'd wake up and the whole jar would be dry, which is not what I want. I just need to evaporate a little bit of that extra water that got in it. So hopefully... I'm already spattering. I forgot my silicone mat. I wanted to bring my silicone mat up here to kind of put under this because I can just take that and go clean with it. But yeah, I forgot. Um, if this eight round ends up being too much, you're going to see me go back to my um, size six, which most likely I am done with the large brush. So I'm going to get that out of my way and just stick it upside down so I can start to dry. 
All right. First, we're gonna start with, I need to make this, if I'm gonna do the trees in the back, um, I mean, excuse me, the mountains, I need, this can't be white. The whitest white is going to be through here and our snow and the snow that's on our tree in the foreground. I need this to be more blue. So I, what I have on my brush, I actually think I'm gonna pull that away. I'm gonna bring this in. I can use a portion here and it's just a little tiny couple little specks of blue there. I'm just gonna mix it. Just gonna mix it with that. I just want to get this. A nice light blue. And let's just start on some of these peaks. Don't, um, don't try to cover every, every single bit of it. Right. Um, that is, it's a little bright. I'm gonna have to see if that, I may need to like dull this a little bit. but I'm just going to catch a few of these faces and put some, dab some snow in here. And you're really going to see those mountains start to take on their form. And this is where I was saying, it doesn't matter if your dark went a little too far that way because your white was going to cover it. And try not to put your hands on the bottom part of your painting. If you're painting along, you are painting along I would love to see your work uh, if you're not a member of the art group yet you can join exploring art on either Facebook or MeWe whichever platform you prefer uh, I cross post to both so you won't miss things that I post um, choosing one over the other And the other thing I'm not going to be too concerned with, with this is because we are going to, um, put some snow. We're going to start putting the stages of snow that it, because our snow globe, somebody has shaken it. I say that all the time here when it starts snowing, like somebody's shaking the snow globe again. And we're going to put in, yeah, see, I, I still think that this might be a little, a little bright. I may need to, I may need to make this a little bit more blue. But we're going to start putting snow on this, on these areas in just a moment. So we have our trees back here too, and that's going to need the same blue. I really want that. Whoa, I almost stuck that right in my jar. Not what I would have wanted. All right, I just mixed that up with a little bit more blue. I'm just gonna come back over here and kind of go over. If I leave some areas lighter, it's not gonna bother me. I'm just kind of tapping it to see it needs to be a little bit more, a little darker value. It's a little too light for this part of the scene. Kind of reshaping this one a little bit, bringing it down like that. Yeah, I like that blue much better. The other one was too white. <coughs> it wouldn't be that white. I mean, a little bit here is fine. Okay, just one second. Sorry, guys. I could feel like it was just like something stuck in my throat. I did not want to cough. All right. I need this just a little bit more. Again, I almost went into my, I put this here. So I stopped trying to go into my other one. If 
Right now I'm using the lighter. I'm kind of using a little bit of both just because I want to put Let's see that was a little bit darker value there. I'm not covering everything and I'm gonna bring some of this through the foreground just so we can get some different values in our snow we're gonna bring in uh, some brighter also so don't worry if you feel like you get a little too carried away with this um, as long as you leave some of that mid-tone in there we can always brighten stuff up if we need to. Well, I wasn't worried too much about coming up to, because I know I'm going to add white in here. All right. Now I need a little lighter than that because I'm seeing this color and my tree color, and those are almost the same. So I'm brightening this up just a little bit, and I'm going to put some snow on my trees that are in the distance. And this is definitely darker than any snow coming in the back of that cabin. It is darker than any snow that will be on my trees in the foreground. I'm not trying to worry about I'm just dabbing. If I leave some of those darker values your brain's going to fill in the rest for me. So let me bring that a little closer so you can see. Okay, your brain's going to fill it in. It knows those are trees back there. And it might not look like it when you first do that. Um, that might feel really weird. Don't worry about it. Trust the process. When you back away from your painting and then come back, you're gonna be like, oh, wow, okay, it does look like trees. Just turning this so I don't put my wrist in my base of my um, snow globe. So that's still very cool, it's still drying. And we're gonna put snow on top of this. So even that's gonna blend some of this out more. So you can't get, uh, you can't worry too much about this these parts you're just dabbing you just want to see the different values so here this is a little lighter but in my it's a little lighter but in my background we can actually work as like a highlight. Okay, there we are. All right, now we need this to be bright or white. So now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna switch it up. Any color that's in my brush now, I just go ahead and mix in with this. So it's not pure white. Actually, I need a little bit more water. My brush was getting quite dry. A little bit more blue too. There we go. Because I have to do these trees. And I want them brighter than this, but not white. Like what's going to go up here. A little too much on my brush, but I didn't want to. There we go. I didn't want to get rid of it. This brush will do all of this tree. No problem. And the roof of my cabin. I'm just dabbing. Making sure that I have some that are coming towards me by doing smaller strokes. 
So you see how like I just, if I want it coming towards me, I just dab a little spot. Thanks, Joseph. Maybe there's a third tree. Let's, let's pop a third tree in here. Just putting in some brighter. There we go. It might look like it's in between. And now to do the, to do my roof of my cabin, I'm just going to come right on top of my triangle and I'm tapping the line. I'm not trying to paint a straight line. I'm just kind of tapping. So if I try to get my hand out of the way so you can see this, I'm just tapping or letting my hand be shaky and that's going to put snow on it for the roof, the roof would come the same way, right? It would get skinnier. It's going to come like this. I'm not done with this yet. And maybe the end of my logs have some snow on them. I definitely have snow on the ground alongside the cabin because it falls off the roof. And down here in front. So I'm not worried about, I wasn't worried about the base of that being perfectly straight. These are snow banks. And now we're going to tap right down alongside all the way. You see, I'm just kind of, I'm working in like little circular type motions, but I'm lifting and tapping. I'm not just like going circles on the paper. I'm letting that line get wider as I get down. I'm going to start back up here. Skinny. We're building our snowbank because this color is darker and we're going to brighten it up as we come in with whiter, more, more white paint. And just going to tap all the way to the base. And my brush is finally about out of paint. I got a little bit onto my base here. So I'm just going to, this is important. I want to make sure this is really dry because I just want to lift that white off. I don't want to cause a bloom or a back run there. Okay, so there's that step. Now I want some snow on this because I need distant snow. I need to take, while my brush is clean, I'm gonna get some of the Dr. Page Martin's Bleed Proof White, put it over here. Take a little bit of this. I want this to be more blue. I don't want this to be bright white. This is snow that's further in the distance. Okay. Now we're going to take whatever your preferred method is for splattering paint. But I have recently found that taking this old toothbrush, I'm going to show you. I don't know why I'm worried about this spot being on here because I'm about to make a whole bunch of spots. So if I take my tooth, this old toothbrush, I'm going to dip it. I'm going to, let me take the reference photo away for a moment. I know some of you like to see the reference photo. We're going to take that away for a minute. 
I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to dip just the tip in water. The toothbrush holds plenty of water. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to work my brush into that color I just made. Okay. Now, coming back to my painting. I don't want it on my, the base of my snow globe. And if you don't want it somewhere, you better cover it up. So I'm just going to take a piece of, and I don't need to worry about the foreground so much, but I'm just going to take some paper towel. It's okay if I get cover up a little bit of the base of the globe itself. I just really don't want it on my base. And I'm just going to come in here very gently at first. I want to see how how is that splattering? What size am I getting? Where is it going? Is it showing up? See, it's hitting over here. So I just have to adjust. And you can't really see this one so much because you can see it falling over the mountains where the mountains are darker. You can see it come down. It shows up coming over the cabin. It's showing up on my tree. So I need this to be a little bit brighter. I'm going to take a little bit more of the white. Bring it over here. Still with my blue, so it's not bright white. Clean that brush so I don't contaminate my Dr. Page Martins next time I go in there. I'm going to try to get some more. That's a little brighter. These are very fine. And it's just not giving me enough. I'm putting a little bit of blue in it just slowly because I want to make sure this is not bright white. This is the last ones we do will be brighter white. Pick that up with my brush. And while I'm making snow, a good time to share an update with you. So I won't be streaming next week. Uh, that will be my week off in between Christmas. And if I'm talking softly, I apologize. Um, just realized that I'm probably mumbling to myself. But next week I will be, I will be off. I will return the following week, so the first Thursday in January, is my plan. Uh, that could get derailed if, because my week I may not be streaming, but I will be working. I'm going to be working on uh, getting new camera angles set up so that when I'm doing this, you'd be seeing it up here close and personal. Um, trying to imp make improvements to bring you better views and yeah so this is just really really fine again these really fine i'm going to bring this closer to you so you can see it here in a moment i'm like destroying my my poor manicure and you see i got some on here um i'm gonna lift, try i'm gonna try to lift that this is brush yeah lift that out of there. Apparently I didn't have it flat enough. I'm just really drying this because I don't want it to push a bloom on my... I'm really liking the way the base is looking so far. Okay, so see right now we have lots of little snowflakes in there. But the toothbrush gives you such fine uh, speckles 
that I'm really liking the effect. Now I could get bigger ones if I had that loaded more. I was trying to be very conservative at first because we're going to build on this. <clears throat> so now let me just take the white that was still in my, this is a little brighter. So I'm coming back over. This was from what I just mixed for my snowflake. See, I'm coming back over my little cabin, brightening some of this up. I can leave spots that are the darker white. Or that more, you know, blue white. It's just going to look like shadows I'm putting some highlights in my snow so this color is perfect for some highlights You see, if I want to soften it, you saw I just it just drag my finger across. It just softens it. The snow up here maybe it's brighter because uh, maybe there's lights on somewhere in that cabin. We can't see one, but it could be there. All right. Grab some more of that color. And now I'm going to start to build... Just tapping along this snow bank again. It's not my brightest, it's not my lightest value. And I want to leave some of that darker value in there. Right, and I can turn that reference photo back on so you guys can see. To kind of pull some of that color out. So it kind of looks like it's sloping. All right. Cleaning my brush out. Now I need the white. We're getting there. We are almost done. getting some of the extra out because I know that was very wet and if I came right in with that brush oh I was gonna make a mess I'm gonna put the snow on my tree to start with so that I'm not reaching across my pathway once I've done that so just try to hold my brush at an angle so you guys can see how I'm doing this just tap it on, leave. We want some of that darker color to remain. We want to see into this tree. Even when um, our trees are heavy with snow, we can still see inside them. If we can't, it's probably a blizzard. So I'm paying attention to make sure that I'm leaving some of those dark spaces. And this is where I was saying it didn't matter how I did my branches coming down. As long as I maintained the general shape and kept having pieces that stuck out, I just define each branch with the white. Oh, a little too much. Now 
And see, that's looking a little brighter. This is looking a little darker as it's drying. And that's fine. I probably will have to come on with a second layer. And I don't mind when it does this. And it's probably doing this because mine's a little too thin right now. Because I accidentally, like I said, got water in the container when I was trying to clean it up. And that'll fix itself when I leave it open. But when I come back on top, it's just going to give me more values. I'll leave some of the darker areas and then just brighten like the tips and the tops of some of these. Whoa, that was almost a disaster. Okay, so see at the top already, it's it's looking drier. I'm just going to let this whole thing set for a moment. See how this is looking kind of like this. And I don't want that. I want to brighten this up. And actually, I'm going to come in here and just put a couple highlights in a few spots. Just a few, not too many. Right, this is further back. go uh, a little bit more along the top of our top edge I'm just going to the top edge now of that roof just a little bit along the ridge More. And I'm going to walk down my path again. Just dabbing along as I go. Now you see this is starting to look much brighter white. And don't worry, when we put our other snow and we brighten up this snow, it's all going to, um, it's all going to start to come together. As I round this corner, I'm going to move that white where here I could see a little bit of the darker values on this side. As I come around this corner, I'm not going to be able to see what's on the other side of that. So I want to make sure that my brightest white is right to the top. Right where the dark and the light meet. And I can pull some of this down. I don't know how it's windy in there, but maybe it is. And the wind has just swept some of that over. We'll pull some highlights with this. It just softens it, just dragging your finger across. Just kind of softens. I'm going to let this stay getting the darker as it comes around because that's going to help with that globe. The feeling of this is, you know, we're looking inside this round glass object. So you see how I'm kind of just pull it into that edge, but don't go all the way. 
Now I'm going to turn this just slightly. Do the same here. See how I left it coming around? And I was pulling towards, pushing on my paper that way. Maybe a little bit more brightness up here. I was a little heavy handed. Let me just pull that out. There we go. Just a tiny bit back here. All right, and these trees are like as far back as those. I'm not worrying about there being white on those. I'm gonna just touch up some of these spots you see that's already, it's not quite as bright as it was. Oh, I almost dropped a big old drop right on it. So when I say I'm leaving some of the darker, because I know you're not seeing it. If you see back in here, right there is darker. I just went along the edge and up in here, that was darker. And I just put a little bit on top and that adds so much more depth um, to your tree. So if you're watching this on the replay and you're following along, you know, at any time, just hit that pause button. If I've gone faster than you uh, and you need to catch up, if you're trying to, you know, see something or catch a technique, you can always use the little cog and slow the speed down. I might talk funny, but that would be okay. Or if you're painting faster than me and you just need me to speed up, you can hit that little cog and speed it up as well. So if you want to do this at twice the speed, I'm pretty sure that is a setting that you can choose. I might talk like a chipmunk, but I don't mind if you don't mind. Okay. Here we go. A little extra... I want our focus to be here. So I'm bringing the light to this area. And when we glaze the, for the glass, that's really going to help make that happen. Just kind of pulling that snowbank out. All right. Hi, D. Lynn. Thanks for joining us. You're here and that's all that matters. We don't mind if you were late. Got to get that Christmas stuff done, right? We only have so many days left. There we go. See, my fingers are all full of white from rubbing that in, but it's fine. So now this color that I have here, just going to give it a little, little extra water, get this out of my round brush. And I'm going to go back to my toothbrush again. We need to do some more snow. <clears throat> we really have to build up our snow now because all that's left to do is build up our snow, dry it, 
and then glaze the glass. Okay. So again, I'm going to protect as best I can the base of my globe. Now you could cut that out. You could cut a relief and just set paper on top of it. That would probably be the easiest thing aside from, you know, other than what I'm doing here. All right. Dip my toothbrush in a little bit of water. I need this to, I need this to move. Just really trying to get in there and get that. Oh, thanks, D Lynn. I have a super chat from D Lynn. It says, have a very Merry Christmas, everyone. Yes, have a very, very Merry Christmas. Uh, we have, we have one, um, we have one tomorrow night and then we have one Sunday. All right. So again, now I'm starting to get in the snow and this is still not pure white. It's whiter, but it's not pure white. Because if you've ever shaken up a snow globe, you know how much when you first shake a snow globe. How much snow starts flying and you see I'm just getting it like everywhere but look at all those snowflakes um, I'm gonna get a little bit brighter make this a little brighter white now pick that up with my toothbrush And having this bleed proof white or your white gouache on here is actually going to lend itself to you to help get the effect to look like glass. It's, it's going to help a lot. All right. I really want this to get right. Look at my poor manicure is all just like unspeckled. Does it want to cover? Yeah. Luckily it's just water. Um, water base might wash it right off. And the good thing is anything I put out in my palette that I don't use, it'll just dry and I can re-wet it and use it next time. And I'd get a little bit bigger snowflakes than this, but that's okay. I think I'm about done with the snowflakes. It is what it is. It's fine. I'm going to have to clean off my base. I just need some near the bottom. So again, I'm going to take a brush that's going to be barely damp and we're just gonna, gonna lift those just to raise them it, oh, I need to be a little a little wetter than I was I keep drying because I'm like so afraid I'm gonna mess up my my base here and I absolutely do not want to do that so I'm just making sure I dry without hopefully lifting too much and you could wait you could wait until you are completely finished with your globe to do you know the bottom but look at how snowy it is inside our snow globe let's dry that because now we have to make it look like glass
This is so, I love doing this part. Let me just get this dry. I just saw that it, Joseph said, but it goes so well with your nails. Oh, shots fired. I see D. Lynn is throwing snowballs at Joseph. Okay. Just kind of getting some of the mess out of here. All right. Good, good enough. I can clean up the rest later. I got most of it out of the way. Okay. So now... How do we get, let me, I got to get the white off. We don't want the white. We want very transparent. Okay. Transparent is the key. So I'm going to take the, um, clean water. I don't want, I don't want this kind of water, right? There's a lot of white in that. I just have very clean water. I've got my, Gray. All right. And now we want this very, oh, Merry Christmas. There's Lou. They're waiting. When we're done, we're going to dinner. So they're all patiently waiting for me. All right. You see how I'm really watering this down? Let me, I've got to, I'm going to turn, I'm going to move this over, move this over so you guys can see. This is very watered down. I need this very thin because my globe, I'm going to make it wet in a minute. But I need this ready to go. So we want some very thinned down. Same color we used down here. But it has to be very thinned down because we just want to tint and we want something that we're going to see right through. Now, if you look on the reference photo over there, you're going to see that I... This is going to be wet. We have to work quickly. So final step is you'll see how I wet the surface. Then I'm going to come in and glaze this color around the outside. We don't want to rub too much because we'll rub away. We'll reactivate the Dr. PH Martins and we'll rub away some of our snow. So we want to work fast. If it starts to smear, that's where we're going to just let it. And we're going to kind of use that to do for our highlights or we'll come back with a little bit of this and we'll put them back in while it's all still wet and it'll just be nice and soft and it'll for us the reflections so I'm going to which one this is my 12 so my size 12 round my brush is not going to be soaking wet right I just want to Gently come over this. All right, see that started to smear through here. That's going to be one of our highlights. And that told me stop. I'm going to come back. We're just going to glaze. I don't want a lot of strokes in the same areas. See how it like activated right there and it pulled? We'll make that work. But this is what starts to give us the look of glass. I'm going to skip over where all that, a lot of that white is. I'm going to come down around. And now that I have that out there. I'm just going to come with a clean brush and just kind of soften the edge. Pulls a little bit of that darkness down. But that's fine. I'm just going to soften that edge. This one too. 
what you just saw me wipe off was I touched my, my base. If I want it a little darker at the top, I can put that back in. Right, this is all damp now. I'm just trying to be really careful with where I put all my blue. Working in circles. It will pick up some of the snowflakes, but it won't pick up all of the snowflakes. So that's why we did so many. It's gonna be plenty. Right, and this just kind of gives us the feeling like we're looking through glass. If I go over that tree, it has to be one stroke and I have to just stop because otherwise I'm gonna mess it up. And we don't wanna do that. We work too hard. Okay, now I can come through do a little bit darker line because I'm going to want some shadow and highlight. I'm going to want some contrasting values right near each other. And I don't like how that looks, so I'm just going to clean brush, just kind of tapping that edge. Okay, now we got to put some of our white back in. So dab a little bit of here and I'm going to bring, let's start in the middle of where I want it. I'm going to bring it up, bring it up from that point. I'm going to bring it down from that point, following the curve that was already there. So again, here where I smeared in, if you, let me show you that. See how I I smeared my tree. I really smeared it right here. Uh, you're, I'm just going to come right there. Bring it up from that spot. Bring it down from that spot. a lot of white on here um, so I'm trying to be really careful where I put it follow the curve right here where it kind of smeared I can come right over that mark there we go all right if you want any other you want to like emphasize any other snowflakes that would be a time just kind of dot some in maybe you liked some that were up here but they got wiped away if i can see where those are i don't have to splatter because that would mess up my you know the glass effect but i can certainly grab some of this white and go over a few of those dots and dot them in Oh, I almost dipped in my blue. Did you see that? And I'm actually not liking those. They're a little too dark. I'm going to just kind of dab those out of there. There we go. I, I felt like it was taking away from the look of the we were getting for, with the glass. What I'm doing is I'm just looking for spots where it naturally spattered and touching those in the central area. But you don't have to. It could be done where it was. When I did my card, I was already, I was done at that point. But you see how now it's like, looks so much brighter inside. 
to leave it below. I'm just brightening up a little bit of this highlight. It just felt like it dried a bit darker. There you go. Same with up here. This one dried a little dark. I'm just going to brighten it back up. There we go. I think that is good. I mean, you could like, I might paint this a little bit darker, um, later, but I'm going to leave it like this and I'll come back to it, uh, again in the morning and see, do I like it or do I want to add to it? And if I do any touch-ups, um, you know, I'll be sure to do those before I post a picture, but I'll post a picture for you guys over on, um, on my Clark Fine Art page. So if you follow me at Clark Fine Art on Facebook or MeWe, uh, maybe I'll even post this on Instagram and that would be at Clark underscore Fine Art. It's the only place where I'm different. And if you painted this one with me, I would love to see your work. So no stream next week. Huge thank you to my moderators, uh, Joseph and Tara. I know Tara had some internet issues today. Uh, thank you for all that you do. Their links are in the description. Please check out their channels. Thank you, Dylan. Dylan said very beautiful. Look at that. Oh, okay. And as always, um, I hope I, I'm like, I moved everything today. So everything is kind of out of whack. There we go. Ah, yes. Be sure to like, we are just like eight away, eight of you away. If you have considered subscribing to the channel, please do so. We are eight from our goal and, um, yeah, I appreciate it. It'll be a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, thank you to the patrons and members. Uh, I couldn't, you guys make it possible to do more. And um, I'm going to pop another video up right down there on the replay. If you're watching this, Merry Christmas to everyone. I will not be here next week, not live, um, but I will return hopefully the week after with some maybe new look, new stuff with the studio. Uh, oh, caution artists that play, Shauna. I hope that you guys are doing well where you are in Maine and uh, that everything's going well. Have a very Merry Christmas and a happy, safe New Year. And I will see you all in 2024. Uh, until next time, my friends, keep creating. See you soon. Bye.